to the Genesis Principle Fine Arts. I am Alton Jones. Today I'm working on this painting behind me here. I call it the Yellow Face. It's a painting of a mustard field close to my home. It started out as a plein air painting, but I decided to take it back to the studio and to complete it here. So I'll be showing you a bit of that. And also, if it's your first time joining me here on my channel, uh, thank you for checking out my content. You should check out my intro video and that will give you a pretty good and a well-rounded understanding of what my channel is about and then we can go from there. Beyond this point, uh, my intro will run and then you will see me painting. I'll see you in a minute. Roll it. Roll the tape. Roll it. Roll tape. <laughs> Roll tape. I love it. Welcome back, um, back in the studio as I promised. Uh, just continuing my work on the yellow phase. As I said, I would be finishing it in the studio. It did start out as a plein air painting, but I've decided to complete it indoors. Um, and so I'm just about to start mixing up my colors and start working on that. I thought I'd show the layout of the colors real quick and also a couple of the pictures well at least this picture I don't have the other picture on hand but I thought I'd show this picture at least so you have a good understanding of what the field looks like at least from a photographic reference point um, so there's no clouds in this particular picture but in the painting clouds are included and in the other pictures the clouds are there in this particular picture the clouds were leaving when I took this one but the other picture is a little bit brighter. But this shows the layout of the actual place properly. I'm painting this picture void of the the lamp, the um, power lines in the back, because I want it to look more as a natural landscape before those things were implemented. So as those things are somewhat synthetic and artificial, I won't be including those. So I thought I'd show you the picture real quick. So I'm working from a couple of photographs now and also from memory as well. I must apologize for the, the glare from my lights on the glass here, but uh, hopefully it translates uh, not too bad on camera. Okay, so the colors I'm working with today is titanium white and uh, Prussian blue and alizarin crimson, which is a form of red for those who are beginners and don't know too much about paints, about oils. And this is cadmium yellow medium. Back to the uh, Prussian blue. Prussian blue is a very strong, very uh, dominant color. So if you're a beginner in, in oils, or I would not recommend Prussian blue for you to start with as a beginner. It's a very, very influential color. It's very dominant. And if you use it in to slightly influence your paints, it will in it would influence your oils greatly. It will dominate your oils. It's that it's that potent. It's a very potent color. So I wouldn't recommend Prussian blue for a beginner, but uh, there's other forms of blue that you can use. You can use thalo blue. You can use um, quite a few other types of blues that you can use instead of, uh, of Prussian blue. So, okay. So I'll be mixing up some color now and... Um, We'll be taking it from there. Today, I'm um, just working on the, the trees in the background. I'm completing the, the tops of the trees, the very pinnacles of the trees where they meet against the skyline. 
I'm finalizing those so that it sits properly in the background and so that's what I'll be mixing up the, the color here for. I'm using mostly white and a very small influence of the Prussian blue and a touch or a tad bit of the uh, alizarin crimson and cadmium yellow medium just to have the appearance of, of, of distance in terms of perspective and then the next frame you will see me addressing the background and painting and so I'm mixing my colors here now um, on the paint palette here uh, you might be finding a lot of glare on camera I hope not I'll see how it looks once I'm finished and then I'll try to adjust that a little adjust the lighting a little bit but as it is light there's only so much I can do and so far I'm mixing my medium of choice today is uh, I'm using this medium that most artists seems to seems to to like to like using and it's liquid liquid original is what I'm using not really necessarily plugging for this brand uh, it's just what I use and I find that it works it works for me gives me enough speed in terms of drying time and doesn't dry too fast that way I have time to to work my way through my colors so to this mixture to address the, the skyline in the back above the treetops I'm mixing the titanium white as I said um, adding a little bit of Prussian blue to that and uh, alizarin crimson which is a form of red and also cadmium yellow medium and so I'm just about ready to go so and also the, the liquid original is added to that as well. And so I'm now ready to adjust the top of the skyline. So let's go over to the canvas and um, we'll go from there. Okay, so we're back at uh, the canvas now. Just about ready to start straightening out just before I came on camera, I actually started touching here a little bit. Just adding some color to here, kind of giving a little bit more definition to the lining of the sky. So basically that's what I'm working on now. I just finished mixing all the colors together. And so I'm addressing that now. After finishing this, I still... I'm still going to... To add a little bit more blue to it to finalize and um, add a little bit more blue so that the colors sit a little bit more naturally so the, the uh, not the colors the trees so that they sit a little bit more naturally and I I do have the picture here that I spoke about so I'm viewing that as I go and also painting from my memory and my intentions here is not to make this photo real um, I don't care much for photorealistic paintings it's um, it's fine if you're a photorealist painter but I like when a painting looks like a painting I think it should look paint I think a painting should look painterly that's the beauty of of a, of a painting when it, it looks like an artist actually touched the canvas and did some things and not so much that it looks photorealistic as if it's a photograph I mean if you want to if you want a photograph just simply take one I think that makes more sense but I, I do I can appreciate an artist who works photorealistically I think it's amazing it's, uh, it takes a lot of talent to do that but personally yeah. my approach is slightly different I'm not used to painting and 
narrating my work because I, as I say, I'm still new to this. I'm not used to painting and speaking all the way through. So I'll try my best to do that, but it's really not my thing. But I'll try to do that just so that you can have some idea of what I'm doing and what's going on in my mind while I paint. So basically what I'm doing now is kind of giving the impression that light is passing through the trees uh, or there's some openings in the, in, the, in the canopy, in the branches where the sky is showing, showing through that. So that's what, what I'm working on presently. And this, a lot of people tend to ask about this. This, this is just, it's just a piece of stick. It's a... It's just a bar that you can use to steady your hand if you're a beginner. If you got shaky hands, you can use something like that to steady your hands so that your canvas don't shake as much or your hand don't shake as much. Especially if you're doing, um, if you're trying to, to do some straight lines, you can use something to steady your hand. So that's what I'm using that for. I don't need it all the time, but I do use it. I've got nerve issues with my hands, so I, I use something to keep my hands steady. But I can work without it. I mean, I can. I have different techniques I use. You can use a bar that you can um, you can press on and keep your hands steady. Or some people use their their pinky if you're good at that. When I do a lot of fine detail, I put my pinky out and I address my paint, my canvas like this with my pinky. If you can handle that, some people can. It's this is more difficult than using the bar so you can use your use a bar as a stabilizer for your hand but i use both i just use whatever i feel like using at the time i think so as i said there might be points where i don't say much and there might be points where i say i say a few things if i think something needs to be said but typically i just like to paint a paint in quietness and i usually put some music in the background but as um, a lot of times you try to use a lot of things in your, as background music and YouTube will flag your, your music, especially because of copyright issues and things like that. So for the most part, I just try to paint without it now and um, try to get the work done that way. And if I need music, I can always add it in later or something like that. And as I said, I'm new to this, so I'm still learning as I go. I'm no stranger to a canvas, but so to the social media platform and the whole YouTube uh, processing, I'm new to that. So I'm learning as I go. Okay, no, you can't. You can't necessarily see what I'm doing now. I'm on the can. I'm on the uh, on the paint palette here, just adding a little bit more blue to the to my paint, and um, incorporating that into the mix, into the paint, into the uh, to the paint so far. Um,
And um, I have, as I said, my painting methodology is taken from the book of Genesis, um, the first book in the Bible. And that's where I get the uh, my channel or my title, my painting company is called the Genesis Principle Fine Art. And so the painting methodology is taken from the book of Genesis. So you might, I might be doing some things that looks a little bit different from what you typically see when an artist is painting. I call this scat painting, right? Uh, others might call it different things. It, this is quite similar to dry brushing. And all this is doing, all I'm doing by doing this is I have very little paint on the brush and the paint is close to dry, close to being dry, so dried. So I'm just scratching it over the clouds to give a little bit more depth to the background. Even though it's in the distance, I still want some appearance of, of, uh, of depth to the distance, to the background. So that's why scat paint. Um, some artists, there's a technique similar to this that is called scumbling. So some artists, they do they scumble. Scumbling is ha having a lot more paint or close to a dry brush and scratching. I don't scratch. I don't sc scratch. I'm kind of doing similar to making X's and, and um, hashtag signs. That's basically what I'm kind of doing here. So that's what I call scat painting. You might not find that anywhere in terms of a term. That's just something I call it. And it looks like you're just not really doing much, but a lot is being accomplished and you'll see that when the painting is complete. And I love that a lot of the color it tends to go matte very quickly because the brush is close to being dry. So the details won't show too much until the painting is varnished when, I'm when I've completed it. Or unless I choose to do a bit of oiling out, or some artists like to call it oiling in. And um, I am not going to oil out. I'm just going to continue painting my way through until I'm finished. Okay. So now I'm not scat painting. Um, oh, f for those who are musical, if you're musical, then scatting is something that musicians or vocalists tend to do. You can scat with with an instrument as well, but scatting is, uh, I guess, in the musical sense, what some musicians do. For example, when they're singing a song and they get to a point where they they do something like that's that's what is called scatting. So basically, it's improvising vocally, melodically with your vocal cords. So basically, I'm doing the same thing with a paintbrush. At least, if that's any form of in invention um, on my part I think that's what I call it for now for now I think I'm gonna leave this side alone for now. Just let it dry out a little bit. Um, I'll touch here a little bit more. And then I'll be leaving this side alone and letting it dry and I'll be doing a little bit on the other side. The side that is closer to me. Um, also very important, when you paint, especially for beginners, um, I like to address the beginners more than anybody else because I think um, a beginner tends to be those persons who make 
a lot of these mistakes the most. When you're painting, try not to leave any ridges. Paint ridges of paint. Any ridges of paint on your canvas. It will show up very much in, in your painting when the painting is finished. Especially in your in your in your dark areas, try not to leave any any ridge lines of paint. Like for example, what I mean by a ridge line, if I was to pull the paintbrush like this, there's a thick ridge that forms from the paint because it's there's a lot of paint on the brush. You have to try and remove those because if you're painting in an area where, more so specifically a dark area, you want dark area a lot of your shadows will reflect too much light the ridge lines of paints paint ridges they will capture a lot of light and reflect that and so it will show up and distract become distracting and throw off what you're trying to communicate in your shadow areas so I'm moving over to this side now so that's one thing one thing to keep in mind try to avoid ridge lines a lot of ridge lines in your paint. If you wish to use thicker paints at certain place to accentuate um, lighting it's best to do that in your sh in your light areas where the the lights brightest so thin paints it's better in the dark areas and thicker paints maybe more so in the areas that show a lot of reflect a lot of light that's a little bit better for your paint Hopefully you can see what's happening here. Here I'm just being a bit extra, I'm blending back the shadows, the blending back a little bit of the background clouds that I'm adding in with the paintbrush, just kind of blending them back into the background so they sit, they sit a little bit more um, as a part of the actual background. So that's what, that's what I was doing there.
So what I'm doing now is just I'm blending a bit of the background, uh, a bit of the the color that I'm I'm adding to to cause the background to sit a little bit better. I'm adding some of that into the clouds and blending it back into one surface. So that it looks a little bit more natural. That's basically what it Okay, for this, this from this area to my right, I'm gonna be leaving. I'm going to be leaving that for the next session uh, because I need to make some adjustments in the actual in in the uh, foliage of the trees here in the background, and uh, those are green tones of cadmium yellow, green tones of blue, tones of Van Dyke brown. Or I might not use Van Dyke Brown. I might make a little bit of dark tones mixed by using some Prussian Blue and Alizarin Crimson. So I'm not going to be painting this area until my next session. I'm just trying to address, address here and then I'll leave it, leave the rest for the next session. Session hopefully after it dries out, then I can come back and make, make some more necessary adjustments to that. Okay, so we'll stop there for today and um, yeah thanks again for watching I'll see you in the next in the next session I'm Alton Jones and take care be safe and I'll see you soon bye for now